British could look back on hundreds of years of parliamentary government. The French had made their revolution in the name of liberty, equality, fraternity. But the 300 little German states were still the property of autocratic princes and ruled without the consent of their peoples. Not one had a constitution, not one had a parliament, not one had freedom of speech or of the press or of assembly. Instead, a rigidly organized medieval society with all power centralized in the hands of the feudal lords. The prime example of this was Prussia, the most aggressive of the German states, where the Junkers, the military caste of landowners, ruled their peasants with iron discipline. To perpetuate this feudal militaristic society, the Prussian king, Frederick the Great, established a rigid code of laws administered by a host of state officials answerable only to him. This was the perfect system to prevent any rise of liberty among his subjects. It was also the perfect system to make possible ruthless aggression against the world. I begin by taking. I shall find scholars afterward to demonstrate my perfect right. And he took. First he invaded Prussia's brother country, Austria, without a declaration of war. Seven years he fought single-handed against Austria, Russia, Sweden, and France. Thus creating throughout the other German states the myth that Prussian arms were invincible. In 1786, Frederick died, but Frederick's state and Frederick's dream of conquest lived on, nurtured and developed by the Prussian militarists, who regarded each war as only one campaign in an unending war for Prussian supremacy in Europe. To this end, Scharnhorst, the organizer, and Gneisenau, the strategist, established the Prussian general staff. Von Clausewitz, the theorist, set down their gospel in his famous book, von Krieger, on war. Just as Prussia has been fated to be the core of Germany, so Germany will be the core of the future German Empire of the West. Clausewitz's book became the Bible of the Prussian militarists. Conquered people shall be left with nothing but their eyes to weep with. But even as the militarists were plotting, a wave of liberalism swept over Europe. Its eddies reached even Prussia. And ordinary men began to think for themselves and to demand what had long been accepted in America, England, and France, a constitution. The king of Prussia answered, never must a scrap of paper come between me and my subjects. A constitution, a scrap of paper. Some citizens determined on liberty went to the barricades. The machinery of the Prussian state went into action. The revolt died. The will to liberty was not strong enough within the people to defy the voice of authority. One result of which, men with a love of liberty began to leave Prussia and the other German states. In the next 30 years, two million of them came to find freedom in the United States alone, while their cousins, remaining behind, were molded into ruthless automatons, ready to follow blindly the will of a leader and that leader arose. Otto von Bismarck, appointed Prime Minister of Prussia in 1862. A clever man, a shrewd man, but devoted to the Prussian dream of conquest and a master of the Prussian method of achieving it. The great questions of the day will not be decided by resolutions of majorities, but by blood and iron, and to go with it, ruthless discipline at home.
As soon as anybody can show me that it is sound policy, I shall be equally satisfied to see our troops fire at the French, the Russians, the English, or the Austrians. Two years after Bismarck became prime minister, he provoked a war against Denmark. The result? Victory. Two years later, against Austria. Result, another victory. Four years later, the great test against France. An amazed world stood by as Prussia, until then a minor power, dared to challenge the strongest nation in Europe. Result, another victory. This was the moment of triumph that changed the history of the world. The Prussian dream of conquest was no longer a dream. The German princes saw the Prussian eagle soaring triumphant in the European sky. Now they clambered on the bandwagon and united under Prussian leadership to form the German Empire. And in the Hall of Mirrors in Versailles, heart of defeat of France, Bismarck saw his Prussian king crowned German emperor, absolute monarch of a new empire founded on blood iron and conquest. Its symbol, Victoria, emblem of victory. Not the Liberty Bell, not the Magna Carta, not Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité, not any symbol of freedom, but Victoria, the symbol of conquest. Thus, Prussia had created Germany, and the myth of Prussian superiority had become the myth of the master race. And if the Carl Schmidt of that generation had any worries about the liberties that had been denied him, they were now forgotten. In this moment of triumph, just to be a German was enough. 